Hey everyone, Paolo here with another video. It is 28 degrees today in London, hot as hell. I have my trusted fan behind me trying to keep me alive. And I thought I'll bring you another video to try and demonstrate how to use the repeater component within a ScreenFlow. Now, this is something that has been out for a little while, but I still see quite a few people struggling with it. So I thought I'll bring a really nice and easy use case to try and show you how I do it. So the beginning of this video is just going to be me talking about the use case and why we would use the repeater component to begin with. And then the second half of the video will be me building a flow with you using that component. And then we'll finish off the video with a demonstration of how it actually all comes together. So in terms of the use case here, I'm going to switch over to Salesforce. And in my dev org, I have a contact record. Now this contact record is essentially playing the role of a property owner within this Salesforce scenario. And so you can see here that we have a related list called property. And this owner, this contact has three properties. Now, what we want to do is our agents have to deal with these contacts, with these property owners. And so sometimes these property owners can call in and they might need to raise cases for various different properties that these owners own. So in order to do that at the moment, what the agent would have to do is they'll have to create a new case and then put in all the details, link it to a property and then hit save and then they have to launch the new button again and create another new case, put some different details, link it to a different property, and then hit save, and then kind of repeat this process over and over again. So we're gonna use the repeater component to repeat that case creation from the original, um, or shall we say, from that single flow screen. So the first thing that we want to do is create a new flow. So I'm gonna use the Automations app actually, and then I'm just going to hit new. And this is going to let me create a new flow from scratch. And then I'm going to select screen flow. Now, a couple of things I need to do here. First, I need to get that contact record. So I'm going to get contact for object. I'm going to select contact. And then for ID, I'm going to create a new variable called record ID with a capital I. And it's just going to be data type text, but I'm gonna make it available for input. And I'll show you why a little bit later. Then after we get a contact, the next thing that we want to do is we want to get that contact's properties. So I'm gonna search for the property object and the owner field is going to equal that get contact record ID. So I'm gonna, I'm getting the properties that are related to that contact. I wanna get all the records because we know that property owners might have multiple properties. And then what I wanna do is I wanna store this in a collection. So I'm gonna create a new variable here and I'm gonna call it um, properties, oh, proper toes, properties. And I'm gonna select record property and then I'm gonna allow for multiple um, values here because we know that there might be more than one record in this one. Okay, so now I think we're ready to create our screen. So here I'm going to say new case main screen. I'm just going to add a prefix here and I'm going to remove the header because I hate this header. It's never useful. And I'm going to hide previous. So now what we want to do under components, you want to search for repeater. And then you wanna drag and drop that into your screen. And now everything else that you drag into your screen, you wanna make sure that you put it within your repeater component, not outside of your repeater component. So here's our repeater and you can see that it says here, drag components to include in the repeater here. So we can drag, for example, a text component. We could drag that below the repeater if we wanted to, but that's not going to be included in our repeater. But if we drag it inside of the repeater, then that becomes part of that repeater component. Now, one thing I want to demonstrate is if I just get rid of this field, um, I'm a huge fan 
of using record variable fields within screen flows because they're super handy. And so the way to do this, you can create a new resource. I'll call it a variable case, for example. I'll select the case object here and I'll click save. And so what this allows me to do is now have access to all of the fields within my case object. But what I can't do, and this seems to be a limitation of the repeater component, is if I wanted to drag and drop the subject field into my repeater, I can't do that. You see, it doesn't even give me an error message. It just, nothing happens. I can drag this field below my repeater, above my repeater, basically anywhere else within my screen, but I can't drag this inside my repeater. It is a pain, but there is not much we can do about this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to components. We're gonna have to add them manually. So let's create a subject. Let's create a description. And then for pick list, let's create a pick list and let's call this a uh, case type. And then here we'll add a choice really quickly. Um, we'll add this um, case type and we'll select case. And then here we'll select pick list and then we'll search for case type. So we'll add that. And then of course, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna add the lookup to our property field. This is quite key. So not a choice lookup, my bad. We want a lookup. And then here, this is called property. The field API name is property. The label is property. The object API is our case object. Maximum selections one. So what we want to do here is in record ID, we want to select the get properties. That way the results of this lookup field is limited to properties related to that owner and not all the properties in the system. This is required, true, and we're pretty much done. Uh, no, we're not. We didn't give our repeater a name, of course. So new case. So now we have given our repeater a name. And so let's save our flow before we go any further. I'm just gonna call this contact. Screen flow, re repeater, um, cases, we'll save that. Okay, so if we debug this, and here you can see that I can give the record ID an ID value, which is why we made this available for input. So I'll put that in here. And now we can see that we have a subject description, case type and property. And then we have, this is where the repeater component comes into play. We have this add button here that allows us to essentially duplicate all those fields to add a new record. And we can remove that as well with this remove button. So, so far this is working good. What we want to do now then is we want, once we've gathered all that information in that screen flow, we want to loop through them because there might be more than one entry. So loop new cases. And then on the collection variable, you want to select your main screen. And then your screen component is new case and then all items. This is essentially the repeater component. That's what we called it, um, new case. So we want to loop through that and then we want to add an assignment where we set the case uh, values. So here, this is where that variable is gonna come into play. We created that case variable earlier. So we're gonna select the subject. We're gonna select the description. We'll select the case, um, the type. We also need to select the property. And now we need to select a couple more fields. So we'll select, uh, let's do priority. Let's also do origin because that is a required field. And then let's do the owner of the case record. And lastly, let's do the contact. So. These are all the fields within our case variable on the left-hand side. And now we're gonna give those variables a value. We're gonna assign values to those variables so that when we create our case record, it can take those values and put it into our record. 
So for subject, we know what this will be. This is in our current loop item and it's in our screen component, subject. So we'll do the same for the rest. Current, current loop item, description, current loop item, case type, and then current loop item, property record ID. Now priority is a pick list. So we're gonna set it to high. This is just a sample. You can set that to whatever you want. Case origin as well, it's a pick list value. So you can set it to whatever it is that you want. We're gonna select web just so there is a value there. Um, owner ID, we're gonna use the user ID. So the user that is running the flow. And then for a contact, we're going to get the contact ID from our get element, uh, the very first element within our flow. Okay, so we've added all these values to a variable. Now what we need to do is we need to assign this variable to a collection. So here is, uh, let's create a new collection. So it's a variable, we're gonna call it collection cases, data type record case, and we're gonna allow multiple, and then we're gonna click done. Operator is going to be add, and then here we're gonna select our variable for case. So we're adding our case variable into a collection variable for our cases. And the reason we're doing that is because we don't want to add a create element within our loop. That's bad practice. And so outside of our loop, we can now add a create element that's going to create our cases. And then here, we wanna select multiple and then we wanna select our collection. Okay, this is looking pretty good. So we're gonna hit save again. And now what I wanna do is I wanna test. So I'm gonna debug this and I'm gonna go back to Jack Rogers here. We can see that he has three properties and he has zero cases. I'm gonna copy his ID. Then I'm gonna go to my debug. I'm gonna paste that ID in there and I'm gonna start trying this out. So this is case one, description one, the type mechanical property. Here are his three properties. I'm gonna select the first one, which is actually the zero, zero, zero. Then I'll click add. Now case two, description two. Mechanical, I'll select the second property, which is actually number one. And then case three, description three, mechanical, and I'll select his third property, which is actually zero, zero, two. Now I'm gonna hit next and let's see what happens. Okay, so we didn't run into any errors. So far, so good. Seems like everything was created. So what I'm gonna do now is actually go to the front end because I didn't run this in rollback mode. I can now see that the records have been created. So this is Jack Rogers here, and we've got three cases created now, case one, case two, case three. Priority is all high. I'm gonna open one of these cases. Let's have a look at them. So it is assigned to the first property, which is zero, zero, zero. Um, it is assigned to the right contact, which is great. It automatically pulled the account as well, which is fantastic. Case origin is web, priority high, and we have our case subject and description, which is case one, description one. So if I go back and have a look at the second record, we can see that everything has been mapped correctly. It is mapped to the right property, property 0001. There's three zeros there. And subject is case two, description is description two. So this is pretty much how you do it. It's quite straightforward. You just have to add the repeater component within your screen flow. You then have to add components within that repeater component for it to work. You need to map everything to uh, variables so that you don't add a create element within your loop and then assign that variable into a collection. And when you use your create element, just assign your collection to that create element as long as it's outside of your loop and then you're good to go. So I hope you found this video helpful. Until next time.